We'll be talking about our inventory management platform, StockSort. Where would that data even come from? What's the strategy to train your model? We get more customers, and as we get more customers, we get more data. Hi, my name is Danya. And I'm Anthony. Today, we'll be talking about our inventory management platform, StockSort. Even though this might seem boring to you, for Barbara here, one of our co-founders' parents, it's a task that she has to perform daily, juggling owning a small healthcare business while simultaneously being a loving mother to her two children. Barbara is constantly trying to do her best to be the greatest mother she can be while keeping her customers happy. But the biggest struggle Barbara faces in her small business is inventory management. Her solution, spreadsheets. Just look at the spreadsheet that she has to use daily. This time-consuming method has caused her so much trouble, to the point where she delivered a medicine that she no longer had in stock. Although this issue seems small, this caused her to lose over 10 customers in the past year alone. Unfortunately though, Barbara isn't alone. About 34% of businesses experience the same struggle with inventory management that she does. Luckily for Barbara and many others, we have a solution to this problem. That's where StockSort comes in. StockSort helps people like Barbara change from spending 90% of their time doing the tedious work for their business to spending that same amount of time doing the enjoyable work that they love while leaving the rest to us. Now we'll show you how StockSort works. On the dashboard, we have AI-powered feedback with graphs showing product inventory and analytics, as well as the list of items that are about to sell out soon. Then we have a transactions dashboard detailing every item bought and sold for inventory record. We also have an inventory dashboard displaying quantity, price, and an input area for adding new items into the system. You can use all these features by purchasing StockSort. Our business model is that the basic StockSort plan costs $39.95 per month. So far in the past few days, we've already achieved our first two sales putting us with a total revenue of around $80. Remember Barbara? She has greatly benefited from this sale as she's been able to keep all of her customers happy now that she has detailed data on what inventory she has and doesn't have. This saves her so much time that she's now been able to spend having fun with her family. Now, we weren't the first people to address this problem. Software such as Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, Clover, QuickBooks, and NetSuite are all also doing their best to solve it. But StockSort is the only product out of all of these platforms that is both quick and efficient as well as affordable. Let's take a look at our market. The first type of small business that we aim to target is family-owned stores in Texas, as we feel that they would benefit the most with our product. Out of the serviceable, attainable market for such businesses in Texas, which is around 962,000, we plan to target about 1% of them. This would be about 9,600 small businesses who manage inventory or around $384,000 in monthly revenue alone. Now, here's our future roadmap for our company. By August of 2024, we want to create a mobile app to allow hundreds of thousands of people like Barbara to manage their inventory, whether it be at a football game or on a run. By September 2024, we hope to add an auto restock feature and a barcode scanner to easily import items. Lastly, by October of 2024, we are planning on launching a marketing campaign to advertise our platform throughout entire social media. Now, in order to ensure that StockSort is successful, we're seeking an investment of $180,000, and this is how the money will split up. $60,000 will go towards our marketing, $70,000 toward the engineering of our product, $40,000 to help keep our website running smoothly, and the last $10,000 towards miscellaneous costs as our company continues to grow, such as legal fees. We are the perfect team to create an inventory management product because we have strong developers who have a lot of coding experience, creative designers, efficient marketers, and even co-founders who have been involved in family businesses experiencing this problem firsthand, which is why we know that StockSort can succeed. In conclusion, StockSort is a fast and easy inventory management platform for small businesses that aims to sell to at least 9,600 small family-owned businesses in the next few years, which is why we have our ask of $180,000 for this product. 
Thank you. And judges, let's help small business owners spend time on what they love. My So the question I have first is actually about your customers. So inventory management has been around for quite a while. One of the things that you didn't mention in your slides was the point of sale integrated inventory management systems like Toast and Square. They all have them. So I wonder, these people, these small business owners who are doing it, who are also the customers of those kinds of companies, why aren't they already paying for inventory management system? Um, and what are you providing that these existing solutions, they're directly integrated to payments, um, aren't? Great. So um, our main point is that uh, we have, we give recommendations and we have a really good analysis of like the inventory and the sales in a nice graphical interface. That's just really simple and intuitive to use. And since our target market is generally smaller businesses with like one or two people running the whole show, um, it's just much simpler for them to use. But I mean, those guys are using payment processors. They're accepting credit cards. So like they would be using Square. Why aren't they using the, the Square inventory system? They're, they're using, um, from, from what, from the data that we've gathered, what they're using is mainly the like pen and paper and like an Excel spreadsheet. So for, for the small business owners in my area and in like the area that we're marking right now, Texas, that's what they tend to use. And this is like an up notch from there. And yeah. Did that answer your question or did I? I mean, you definitely answered my question about what they're doing. I am, my question is, do you, have you gotten a sense of why? So the reason why I'm asking this question is because whenever you have a market, like inventory management is one of the original applications of computers, like not just SaaS. And so whenever you have a segment that is not using an existing solution other than like Excel, I always get kind of nervous that maybe there's a reason they're not doing it and therefore a reason that no one has penetrated it. And so then I wondered, do you know what it is? And have you like, you know, have you actually made something that addresses that core reason or are you just pursuing a negative selection effect where it's actually the bad set of customers? Okay. So, um, yesterday, uh, yesterday and like the entirety of like last week, I actually spent like a great deal of time walking around town and like asking like literally every business, why they manage inventory the way they do. And a lot of the smaller businesses plainly just said that they use Excel because it's like simple and easy to use and they don't want to buy some complicated jargon like Square or whatever. If that, if that answers your point. So you're basically saying they find the existing manager, man, uh, inventory management systems too complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, ours is like really simple and intuitive to use too, which is why we have a market over there. But of course, there's lots of room for growth and improvement, which is why we made the roadmap. And with our team, we'll be able to complicate, we'll be able to maneuver these challenges together. So I have a follow-up question. It's a little bit related to Evans, but right, it sounds like this is going to be a really big change for folks who are using pen and paper or mm -hmm. basic Excel. So yes. I'm curious, um, you know, what, you know, how have you all thought of approaching that, right? They're transitioning from pen and paper Excel to an AI SaaS, um, I assume desktop first platform for now, and then potentially a mobile app in yeah. August. So um, I don't know if, we, I don't know if it was um, very like visible in the demo for a long time, but we have a really easy CSV import feature. And in the future, we add to we want to add more import features like for pen and paper. Like you just take a picture of it, and it just like you know like runs a open CV on it, and it just reads all the data off of. It. And we one thing I wonder is you mentioned like AI recommendations, like you know for someone who's running a small business. They probably have simpler inventory, smaller amounts, not as high volume. Where would that data even come from? And what AI would could even make sense? Like, you know, if you're saying, hey, what's your average inventory? I mean, you don't need AI. You just look at the uh, historical average of how long it takes to sell something out and then just, you know, use a, use a basic linear equation. Like what AI is there here? Well, that's not a we, well. That's not really a linear equation. I would say there, uh, but I just want to I just want to clarify this. The reason we're using AI is because um, markets tend to change, 
and sales tend to change too. And generally the way people perceive things tend to change too. And a lot of them are features that we don't really have in our MVP, which is why, as I said before, we're still like working on our product. Cause right now all we have is our MVP and we have a couple of sales. We really want to get at it and we want to, um, we want to add more features. And we also have like the market analysis, if you know what I mean. Does that make sense or did I avoid your question? Well, I wouldn't say to avoid it. I would say, first of all, with something you haven't built, don't say that's one of the things you have in your pitch. Say it's part of your roadmap. But number oh, two is I'm trying to understand what it is you even want to build. So like if you're, you know, again, the, you have to consider when you have machine learning, what kind of data do you have? So when you have the math of machine learning, you actually have to have enough data to actually make it work. Um, and this is and actually one of the things that you do if you take like a machine learning course, which perhaps you'll you'll do next year in high school or in college, you'll probably see a chart of, you know, which method there is and how much data you need to make it work. And so I'm wondering for these small businesses where it's like, well, I sell five different kinds of ice cream as opposed to a Whole Foods that sells a hundred kinds of ice cream. And on top of that, I only have a certain number of customers a day which is like a hundred times less than Whole Foods, just to pick a random store, most machine learning methods will not work. And it's not like these methods are changing so much. Um, and it's not like you're charging so much that you can you know, necessarily have massive compute costs without actually affecting your operating margins. So I'm trying to understand what you even want to do. Right. Okay, we have time for one last question. So, um... When you say that we don't have enough data and we don't have enough compute to manage all the data yet with our price, I want to mention one thing. This price is like a temporary starting point. And as our businesses grow and the companies we use grow too, uh, we're going to, we will modify the price accordingly. And as for the AI data that you're talking about, we, we can take data from, we're taking data from other businesses as well. And that, and that's like a direction that we can like look toward in a roadmap and that will really help us too. I'd like to follow up on that question. Like, how are you getting that training data? So how will you actually get the training data from the other businesses then if they're not your customers? So um, as they get more customers, we'll have more data. And we well, um, need the training data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you don't have customers yet, then how do you have the training data? Or what's the strategy to train your model? We have a lot of businesses using our software. We have a lot of training data and we use the training data. But you said there was five customers. Yeah, and you need to learn data. and grow. We get more customers. And as we get more customers, we get more data. Okay. Thank you very much. Stock By the way, I just want to say as a teachable yeah. moment here, one of the reasons we're asking some of these questions is, you know, um, in the venture world, small, you know, this is a small business play. Small businesses historically have the benefit of no customer concentration because no customer ends up really dominating your thing. But there's a lot of marketing expenses, which affects your operating margins. And there's limited pricing power. These guys will not pay. You can pay maybe more per transaction, but the aggregate amount you pay is much lower. So I'm skeptical that you would actually be able to increase your price past what you already have, especially given that there are bundled integrations with existing point of sale systems. So I would just think really hard about what can you actually use to justify that price and assume that you cannot raise it for a while. Right. Okay. Um, of course, uh, we're still we're out of time. Yeah. Thank you, Stock Sword. Uh, next team, get ready, please.